I got one. I got two. I got three. Let's go, multi kill. Let's go. Okay, go, go. Slide, slide, cancel. Slide, canceling. Slide, canceling. Shot one with a shotgun. Shot two with a shotgun. Shot three with a shotgun. The shotgun's meta. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Win. Let's go. All right, come on. Let's go to the next game. Let's go to the next game. Two minutes later, McFly went into cardiac arrest from being overly stressed and overly hyped over a multiplayer game. While his viewers and friends were sad, they understood that if he were going to get into a Call of Duty game, this was going to be the result. What's going on everybody? It's McFly here. I'm bringing you right now my Call of Duty Vanguard review. This is going to be an all-encompassing in-depth review. I know my last reviews have been separating multiplayer, campaign, and zombies. This is going to be all three together. I do got to say guys that after going through and trying to find clips and doing my research on this game, doing my due diligence for the review, this review ended up being a lot different than I expected. Um, I came in this with positive, positive mindset for the game um you know i enjoy playing it it's a lot of fun i'm way more addicted to this multiplayer than i was cold wars um and i enjoyed cold war for what it was i mean there were a lot of excuses why it was bad and we're not getting into that but you can check out my review for that if you'd like to see it i came into this with a very very positive mindset on what i was going to say about the game and how i was surprised but as i quickly gathered more information and looked at other reviews and looked at other playthroughs re reviewed my own playthroughs and and my opinion changed quickly without further ado let's get into the review so i did things a little bit differently this time i, I kind of started off with the multiplayer just because the beta and the alpha were fresh in my mind normally i will do the campaign and not go into anything else until i finish the campaign but i decided to get into the multiplayer first i was very pleasantly surprised there was a lot of things that i didn't like in the in the beta i mean it had a slow movement bland colors obviously activision loves making the sun so blaringly bright that you go blind uh the ttk was pretty low for a, even for a Call of Duty. But I was pleasantly surprised on the release to, to find that they fixed a lot of those things. They fixed the movement. I really, really do like the movement in this game. The colors were tweaked just a tad. I know it's supposed to be dark World War II kind of vibes, but they definitely made it a little bit more col colorful and a little bit easier to see uh, you know, enemies coming at you. So they fixed that. The sun is gone. Awesome. Finally, they did something about that crazy sun. So these were all tweaked and fixed during the actual release which is very, very good. It means that they were listening a little bit. Um, so let's talk about some of the other positives here. They definitely found a happy medium on the TTK in this game. The time to kill is kind of between Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019. I know a lot of old school COD fans don't really like, didn't really like the time to kill in Cold War just because it was very, very high compared to other Call of Duties, not compared to other games, just compared to other Call of Duties. It was very high, which is why a lot of people who were relatively new to the Call of Duty franchise kind of liked Cold War because the time to kill on that game was pretty high. So they kind of found a happy medium to make please everybody here. And they made the time to kill kind of in between. It depends who you talk to, really. I personally think it's in between. There's a lot of them that says it's it's so low in this game. It's ridiculous. I think it depends on the gun that you're using. But for the most part, on average, I think it's right where i think it should be between cold war between modern warfare 2019 it's it's pretty it's pretty good unlike in black ops which i really do think camo wise the black ops franchise has been a lot better than modern warfare the grind for camos i think in modern warfare series though to get to the end to get to the master camos has always been better than black ops what black ops has going for it since black ops 3 and the essentially creation of the store and call of duty games was their paid or pay to win camos in the store and the reactive camos those reactive camos are fire and i'm not ever going to say that they aren't those are leaps and bounds better than anything else that's going to come out however the atomic mastery camo in this game which is a really really cool it made grinding for camos fun again the other thing that really surprised me about this game and i know there was rumors prior to its release but there was 16 maps in this game which is really cool uh, I know Cold War I think only had eight and like three of them were, you know, redos of other maps that have already been out. I think this game has a couple of those as well, like I know Dome was one of them. And then uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple others, but it had 16 maps, which is really cool. 
And they also gave us different game modes. They have tactical, they have blitz, they have regular, and then there's another one that I forget right now. And then they have a way to mix and match. So they have all these different kinds of, of pacings for the multiplayer that you can choose from that where you can kind of find your liking. There is tactical assault and then blitz is just fast paced. This is I like blitz because it's more fast paced and you get a lot of kills going into it. You can do all, which is a mixture. Tactical is kind of basic. And then obviously there's hardcore and, and core. And of course, they also have hardcore as well. If for all those hardcore players like I am. Um, I will say in this game, I do prefer core over hardcore just because hardcore since Cold War has really been just point and shoot and die. It's pretty egregious. Since they kind of fixed the TTK in core in this game, I've been playing core more and it's a little bit more fun to actually have to be kind of tactical in your movement. So I, I do like that very much. Graphics overall, both in the campaign and multiplayer are fine. Obviously in the campaign, it's a lot better because they're building most of that campaign on the on looking pretty and i'll get into that but uh they're fine they're not bad they're not spectacular but they're they're serviceable so as i said in the intro to this after reviewing so many different playthroughs and watching other reviews the amount of glitches that i found and that others ran into is pretty ridiculous in the campaign there's floating objects in the middle of the air there's levitating npcs The list is endless, so I'm not going to get into all of them or show you guys all of them, but we also have multiple guns where you, in multiplayer where you either can't upgrade your camos because it doesn't register or the attachment it calls for to you to use to upgrade doesn't even exist. So these are things that need to be fixed in the multiplayer. The biggest glitch of all, which I'm actually not really mad about, is the glitch to be able to get the atomic camo, which is the mastery camo on your guns. All you need is a keyboard and a controller, quick tapping of the controller while moving the mouse and you can get whatever master camo you want, gold, diamond, atomic. It's super easy. It took me about 30 seconds to do. So I wanted to show you how easy it is to do this camo glitch. I mean, it's insanely easy. So I'm gonna show you guys that right now. I'm gonna put my controller up so you can see it. <clears throat> I'm gonna take my mouse and you can see I do not have any of these unlocked literally nothing i have not played with this gun at all um none of these are unlocked so what you're going to want to do is spam let's see the left directional key with the x or a depending on if you're xbox or not or playstation and then move the mouse so i'm going to show you right now what that looks like there you go I now have equipped the atomic and you can see if I go back to here, go to my attachments, that it is now atomic. It's super simple. You can also use it on secondaries, melee weapons. If I choose here, my knife, go to the camo again, say I want to do gold. You just change the order. So I'm gonna do it again. There is <clears throat> the diamond camo. So I now have diamond on my knife. Super simple. This is a glitch that's been in it since it was released. It's pretty cool if you want <clears throat> to unlock. It look like you've unlocked some stuff. That I'm sure will be patched, um, but that's really cool to have that. It doesn't take away from grinding the camo because we do know that that will be patched, but it's still kind of cool to be running around with Atomic at level 20, 23 in the game so what i found in this which was very disappointing especially since i felt in cold war the campaign was leaps and bounds better than multiplayer was that the campaign so blatantly took a backseat in this from the other game modes and frankly it's near unplayable it was very very aesthetically pleasing right the graphics were really good they had a lot of cool cutscenes, and a lot of the cutscenes were very very long and you're literally pretty much watching more than you're playing the actual game. The NPCs AIs are extremely god awful in this game. There were times where I was just sitting there looking at the NPCs running around next to me, not looking at me for over a minute. And then when they do finally see me, they, um, I mean, it takes, this was on hard, so it takes no skill in this campaign. It's more, this, this campaign is more of a movie than it is a game, to be honest. 
it even forces you during the game when you're actually playing and shooting it forces you into quick cutscenes, so you could shoot at whatever they're telling you to shoot at or do whatever objective you're telling them uh, they're telling you to do but until this npc gets to where he needs to be for the cutscene to happen nothing happens uh, and it, so it makes your gameplay almost pointless in fact a lot of the glitches i found within the campaign were massively similar to those that popped up in project red cyberpunk i don't really think i need to go into more detail about about that so the campaign the campaign while had some good moments overall was was really really not not good at all so what it boils down to here in summation is we're paying 60 dollars for an unfinished game at this point and it seemed like that's becoming a pattern for activision and like I said before, before I played the campaign and then before I played the zombies, and I'm not really going to talk about zombies because zombies is what zombies is. Treyarch has always been good at zombies for the most part. I think this is pretty close to uh, Cold War zombies. Uh, obviously, again, there's a lot of God mode glitches and stuff, which is fun for zombies. I wouldn't give it a negative. I wouldn't say it's better than any of the last few. It's fine. Zombies is fine. It's holding this franchise together. The zombies is. When I came into this review, I started recording a lot of it after I had only played the multiplayer. And I'm very addicted to the multiplayer. I find myself looking at the clock to see when I can get on and play. I love grinding the camels. I love the movement. The guns, while some of them are broken, are really fun to use. The gun mechanics and stuff are very similar to Modern Warfare 2019. As you know, this game is on that engine, but upgraded, so makes sense. So like I said, I had a very positive mindset coming in. But as I did more research and I do dove deeper into the game, it just started getting worse and worse and worse. I think this game is better than Cold War, which isn't saying much. Overall, overall, I think this game is better than Cold War. The multiplayer is much, much, much better. The campaign is not as good and the zombies is about the same. The fact that more people play multiplayer than they do the campaign is what makes this better than Cold War. Otherwise, I think we'd be in shambles here with two games in a row that weren't very good but here's the issue i think this is where the big point of contention is for players at this point the fact that we keep paying or having to pay for unfinished games right they're no longer catering to the old fans such as myself who play during the meta of cod games modern warfare 2 black ops black ops 3 they're catering to someone else they're catering to everyone else so us old fanatics get left in the dust the fact that we get a new call of duty game every year leads to oversaturation and it makes it hard for us to really realize and really compare these games to the cods of old like modern warfare 2 like black ops 1 and that's the problem our standards inevitably are lowered because we have so much oversaturation in our brains that it really is hard to fully remember how fun those games were and how great the multiplayer were and how great those maps were our standards are set so low that all we have really to compare these games to are the last three or four co CODs. When we really should be holding Activision accountable, comparing these games to the best of them. And that's what we should be doing. When we compare this game, Cold War, to Modern Warfare 2019, to Black Ops 4, it's pretty good. It's actually not bad. But when we compare this game, and Cold War, and Modern Warfare 2019, to Modern Warfare 2, to Black Ops, to Black Ops 2, to COD 4. Uh, these, these games are paled in comparison to those games. We need to change our mindset. We need to figure out why we keep paying for these games. And I'm one of them. I'm a culprit of this. And I know that. And I am still addicted to this game. And I will keep playing it. And I think that is a problem. Right? We have to get over our addiction to these games and convince people to let people know, look, if you want them to change the game, we, we got to stop buying it. We got to stop playing it. And that's what it boils down to. So let's get to the verdict, guys. I, originally coming into this, I had my rating at about a 6.5, 7.5 range. Just because I enjoyed it. I really love playing it. I was addicted to it. Like I said, the multiplayer. I love the camos. I love grinding it out. I love the movement. But if I want to give an honest rating here. I'm, I think I gave Cold War a 6.5. I think it's slightly better. I can't give this, I can't, I can't give this a 7. I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. And I think mainly because of the improvements they made on the alpha and the beta, what made it to where I understand that they're actually doing something to make the game better. 
There's a lot of issues with this game. And I think if we're being honest, Activision at this point is just doing what they can to get a game out every year. That is their goal. Whether it's a good game, whether it's a bad game, whether it's finished or unfinished, that is their goal. So I don't know, guys. I don't know what else to say. Let me know if you like this review. Leave a, a message in the comments for me of what you'd like to see me review, what you thought of this game. What would you rate it? What is your favorite part of the game? Is it the campaign? Is it the multiplayer? Is it zombies? Is it grinding out the camos? As always, I love your guys' feedback. I love the support you guys have given me. My last video, a couple of videos have been bangers. My anti-cheat video skyrocketed to almost 300 views, which is crazy to me. I haven't gone over 70 for that. So I really appreciate the support you guys are giving me. If you love my content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get that YouTube algorithm going. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, good vibes are contagious. So